Hello everyone, welcome to CS for All. I am Sanyu Hussain. I will be your host for this entire competitive programming series. Now this video is optional for the people who are already having this sublime text setup, but for the people who are just getting started or who are just entering into the competitive programming world, this video is definitely going to help you save a lot of time on code implementation part and help you invest more time on actually building the logic of the code, right? Now we need two things for this setup. First is mean gw and second is the sublime text editor so we will go straight to google chrome and download these two things i will provide the link of both the websites in the video description definitely check that out so first we will be downloading the mean gw i have the link here you can paste this or you can just go to the video description and copy this link so we will scroll down a bit so this is the download button this is generally for windows similarly you can find the download button for Mac as well as Linux. So I will click on this download button and a few minutes pop up will come. So it got downloaded. Let's install it now. So I will click on the install then continue. Don't tease anything. Just click on continue. I will, since I have already installed MinGW, I will just reinstall it for the sake of showing you. So let it install now. It's processing the items. It will not take much time depending on the processing power of your CPU. Okay, so it got finished. Then we will click on continue. And uh, you see there is a green mark here. So you have to go to the option which says the GNU C++ compiler and you have to right click here. You will see there the mark for installation will be available for you if you have already not installed it. Since I have already installed it, it's not available but you can click on mark for installation and then you have to come to this installation tab and click on the apply changes. You will have this option if you haven't installed MinGW previously. That completes the MinGW setup. Now we will download the Sublime Text Editor. Again, I have the link, you can paste it from the video description. So I will click on download for Windows since I have a Windows machine. You can find the required link for Mac as well as Linux. So it got downloaded and I will install it. Okay, so I will be not changing the location. Next, install. Okay, so I think that's uh, it for the installation part. Now we will move forward with the setup of uh, Sublime Text. So now that we have the Sublime Text uh, installed, now we will create a folder. Let's uh, name the folder as uh, the CP series. You can uh, save the folder anywhere. I am saving it in the desktop. Now I will have to make three files. First file will be the code.cpp. So this is the file where we will be writing all the code. The second file will be the input.txt. This is the file where we will be writing the input. And the third file will be our output.txt. So this is the file where all the output will be shown. Now I will just open the sublime text. So I want that all my uh, files that is a code.cpp the input.txt and the output.txt all are shown on the same display. So I want the code.cpp to be on the left hand side and the input on the top right hand side and the output on the bottom right hand side. So for that I will go to view, I will go to layouts and then I will make a column of three. Fine. And then I will go to view, I will do a grouping and max column two. Now what to do? I will just drag the code.cpp file to this section. Then I will drag the input.txt file to this section. And then I will drag the output.txt file to this particular section. Now let's write some code here and see if the input and the output actually works. So let's write a simple code. So using namespace std and main let's take a variable n and print the variable n so if i take an input of 5 here will i get a output of 5 here let's build the code no the code gets compiled but i don't get any output here so what's the reason of that i forgot to write something here 
so that is free open input dot txt read and standard input again free open output dot txt write and standard output let's see if it gives a result now okay so we get a result of five here so what is this thing actually so first of all free open input.txt it is actually taking the input from this input.txt file it is reading the input as a standard input and what is this line doing it is actually delivering the output to the output.txt file it is actually writing the output on the output.txt file and it is a standard output so this is the reason the code was not actually working previously but it is working now after insertion of these two lines i hope you know the use of define in c++ uh, even if you don't know i will just give you a quick recap so if i write a uh, hash define uh, maybe hash here and let's say we write if not defined hash then only print hash is present int l and let's close it and f so what does this particular line of code do so first of all we have defined hash here and this is checking if hash is defined or not if hash is not defined then only this particular line of code will work since hash is defined this line of code should not work let's build the code and see ourselves yeah so the code gets compiled and hash is present is not printed on the output so this means that the code is working perfectly now if i change this name to something else let's name it sunny fine now if we try to run the code what will happen so you see hash is present gets printed this time because hash is not defined this time we have defined sunny this time so hash is not defined this time hence this line gets printed if we change it to sunny that means if sunny is not a defined then only print hash is present so let's check this time by building the code you see the output disappears so this is the functioning of hash define in c++ so now there are several competitive programming platforms like code forces code shape hacker earth hacker rank i know two of these platforms where there are online judges working behind the platform so what does this online judge do they run your code on a particular list of inputs and then they get the output and then they match it with their inbuilt outputs if they match your answer gets accepted if they don't match then you get wrong answer on test cases so these two lines of code will actually hamper the working of those online judges to bypass this we will have to write if not defined online judge then only execute these two lines of code and after that we will write end if so what will this do if macro online judge is not defined in the code then only these two lines will get executed and if it is defined then these two lines of code will not get executed and it will not hamper the working of those online judges so now if you have given contests on code forces and code chef you know there are several number of questions say 7 to 8 questions now every time you cannot write all these lines of code again and again so for that you need function snippets now let's see how to make function snippets so first we will have to copy all these lines of code then we'll go to tools and then to developer and then here to new snippet now we will change the third line and we will just select this line and paste all the copied lines here and then we will decommit this line so just come here with the cursor and delete all this 
again delete all this and then instead of a hello you can write my cp code fine so whenever you will write my cp code in the main code.cpp file all these lines of code will be pasted automatically so let's check it so first we will have to save it let's name it my cp code dot sublime snippet so dot sublime snippet is the dot extension of this snippets so let's save it and then let's delete this and let's write my cp code so if i press enter see this lines of code gets automatically pasted over here so this is the working of function snippet now i will be showing the snippet which i use during my contests this might look a little bit overwhelming but trust me if you sit with this for 30 minutes you will be comfortable with it now before i show you my function snippet i want you to focus on something let's say i define int as long long int right so instead of writing a long long int every time i can just write int and this will be actually my long long int now whenever i am writing my int main function this will be also a long long int right because i have defined it here now how to counter this we can actually write int 32 t main instead of int main here this will actually turn the long long int which is 64 bit into a 32 bit so this is the counterpart which we can play here now i will be showing you my code snippet which i use for my contests so this is the code snippet i use as i already told long long int i can simply write it as int now for the pairs uh, i write f as pair dot first and s as pair dot second for pushback into vector or string i write pb for a set of integers i simply write si for a vector of integers i simply write vi for a pair of integers i write pii for a vector of pairs i write vpi so similarly you can see all these lines coming to this one end l so instead of a backslash n i simply write end l you might be thinking what is the difference between endl and backslash n so we will be covering that up in the interactive problem section in the series this szx will actually return you size of the data structures this alt p will actually help you sort the data structure this q max it is actually max hip and this q min it is actually min hip i will talk about this bug function at the last this print a it will actually help you print all the elements of a vector or array or any other data structure this print 1a it will actually help you print pairs and this print 2 axy it will actually help you print elements in a range talking about this power function we will be talking about this in detail in the mathematical section coming down okay talking about this ios sync with studio actually you will see there are several strict time complexities in contests and what it actually does is it takes bulk input syncs them all and processes all of them at one time and it will definitely help you bypass those strict time complexities talking about this c error so there are different c functions such as c in which helps us to take input c out which helps us to give an output and then we have c error so it will actually help you to know the runtime of the entire program now talking about this t so what is this t so this actually signifies test case now you will see in contest there are several test cases uh, let's say there are five test cases so uh, in each test case suppose we are given a input n and a string of size n so suppose there are five test cases and in the first test case i have a value of n as one and string of size one that is let's say a then i have in the second test case a value of n2 and string a b 
Then in the third test case, let's say the value of n is 3 and the string is abc. In the fourth test case, let's say the value of n is 4 and the string is abcd. In the fifth test case, let's say the value of n is 5 and the string is abcde. Fine. Now what I want to do in the solve function is I want to print all the alphabets or all the characters in the string in every test case. So what can I write for int i equals to 0, i less than n, i plus plus and then a c out, s and i and then a space and finally a end l. Now let's build the code and see if this actually works. Yes, so this is actually working. So in the first test case, we have only A, so A gets printed. In the second test case, we have AB, so A and B gets printed with the space. Then we have ABC, so ABC gets printed with space. Then we have ABCD and then we have ABCDE. So this is actually working. Now we will finally talk about this bug function. So what does this bug function do? So this is actually a recursive function. So suppose you are stuck in a problem and you don't know what is actually causing the error, right? Now you want to debug the program. So suppose you are stuck in a problem and you don't know how the error is actually arising. So you want to check the value of some variable at a particular point of time. Now this bug function will help you in the very same way. Suppose I am taking a integer n and a value n, right? And again I am taking an integer m and a value m. So if I write bug n comma m, this will actually give me the values of n and m at each and every test case. So suppose I have five test cases and then I write value of n as one, then two, then value of n as three and value of m as four, then value of m n as five and value of m as six, then value of n as seven, value of m as eight, value of n as nine and value of m as 10. Now, if I try to build this, Let's see what happens. So you will see that it actually gives me the value of n and m at each particular test case. Right. So this is the power of bug function. This will actually help you to debug your program. So now if you want to know like at what test case value you are having this particular value of n and m, we can do that as well. We can pass here t in the solve function and we will be writing in t here and we can pass on t as well to this bug function and if we try to build the code now see at test case 4 my n is 1 m is 2 at test case 3 my n is 3 m is 4 similarly all the test cases i can see the value of n and m so that's it for today's video if you faced any problem or error or issues while doing the setup you can reach out to us through linkedin or you can comment down below we will definitely try to help you and in the next video we will start with the time and space complexities and if you really think that this video helped you in any way please consider liking and subscribing to the channel so yeah see you guys in the next video bye Audio Jungle